Hello and welcome to this video which is about removing program changes in the lower versions of Cubase. So this was a request generated by a video from another request. So on screen you can see I've imported the same MIDI file as in the previous video but we're going to look at how you can deal with removing those program changes which you often don't want. So here we've got exactly the same MIDI file and if we open up Halion Sonic we can see it's in GM mode it's got all of those program changes loaded up, but we don't necessarily want them. So we're going to look at how you can remove them. Now, in the other video, you'd go to MIDI and then you'd go to the list editor and be able to identify them quickly, but that is not the case here. So what you need to do is open the key editor. So that's available in every version of Cubase. Just double click the part. So here you can see the editor. Now you could have the editor in the floating mode. So you can click it here. Here it is in a separate window. It doesn't make any difference in terms of the functions that are available to you. So I'm just going to close that and leave it in the lower zone one. But often I use the floating standalone window one. Now what we need is this section here. Now if you don't have a controller lane, so if you don't see this, you can click the plus and create one. If you've already got one, you can change it over or you can even create an extra one. So what I often used to do back in the day was create multiple controller lanes. And you get a little pop-up menu and you can see what data is present. So if it's got a diamond, then that's present in the song. You can see there's plenty of things there. And the thing we're interested in is, of course, program change. So I'm just going to click that. So now we've got our program change controller lane. And we can see we've got one event at the very beginning. So if I zoom in, it's just there. So it's just that little point there. If you want to get rid of it, it's as easy as just marking around it and hitting backspace on your keyboard and it will be gone. If you want to edit it, again, marquee round it, and then in the info line here, you can change the value you want to whatever you want it to be. So if we decided we want piano for that, we just put one in, etc. It's as simple as that. One of the ways this is slightly better is that you can see where this happens in context. So typically that will just be at the very beginning, but don't forget to check later on because in this particular MIDI file, they got a bit excited and changed the sound of the finger bass. So at the beginning, we have this. So it's on finger bass. And if we open up Halion Sonic, we'll see it's on electric bass 34. But if we zoom out here, we'll see later on, they changed it. This happened quite a bit with more intense MIDI file programming, because if you've only got 16 sounds, and you need more than 16, you're going to need to swap something at some point. So if we play this here, we will see that this has now changed on channel 4. It's now changed to pad 8. So at some point, the bass player has obviously put his bass down and picked up a terrible synthesizer instead. But this wasn't uncommon, so it's always worth checking a bit later on. I've had a few people be confused over the years when they're like, yeah, it's fine at the beginning, but then later on in the song it changes, and that's because there's a program change later on. So if we wanted to get rid of these, we would need to highlight all of these, hit backspace, and then you're good. So anyway, hopefully you found that that's useful for you. It's a different way of dealing with them, which you can, of course, use in Cubase Pro, but if you've got a lower version of Cubase, then you'll need to do it this way because the list editor isn't present. As ever, hope you found this video useful, and if you have, we'll see you again soon for more Music Tech Tuition.